take care if you're driving there too. 23 past seven. Well, the Prime Minister's pledge not to grant new mining permits on conservation land does leave the door open for oil and gas exploration on land not controlled by dock and, of course, coal as well. Permits for new coal mines are not being ruled out by this government. The Jacinda Ardern told us yesterday on Morning Report that this was all part of the government's plan to transition the economy away from a reliance on fossil fuels. Let's talk now to Russell New- Norman, who's the director, executive director of Greenpeace. He's with me in the Auckland studio. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for coming in. What do you make of this argument that... It's a transition. We still need and we still are open to new coal and new oil drilling because we need to transition from the old economy to the new. Well, if we're going to avoid catastrophic climate change, we can't afford to burn the existing known fossil fuel reserves. We can't even afford to burn half of them at a global level. Uh, so if, if we're going to you know, avoid catastrophic climate change, we need a rapid transition away from fossil fuels. And that means not using the existing fossil fuel reserves, and it absolutely means not looking for new fossil fuel reserves. So a transition means reducing the use of fossil fuels. It doesn't mean looking for new fossil fuels, which is what uh, the Prime Minister seems mm. to be leaving the door open to. And just before we move on to that, your statement that we can't burn the existing fuel fuels that we have extracted if we are to meet our climate change targets. That's not just Greenpeace, is it? That's the World Bank I've seen that from. Uh, that's the Governor of the uh, Board of the Bank of England and um, think tanks right around the world, right? So this isn't really in dispute or some sort of only coming from environmental groups. Absolutely. I mean, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, they first came up with this concept of the carbon budget in their reports, and they said, you know, how much more carbon can we afford to burn if we're going to have a reasonable chance of avoiding, say, two degrees of warming? And when you look at those budgets, they're much, much smaller than the existing carbon that we've already discovered in oil, gas and coal all around the world. So if we're going to meet the carbon budgets that the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the World Bank and others have identified, then we simply, we can't even burn half of the existing known fossil fuel reserves. These facts are are not even in dispute. They're well established. So is it possible to say that this is the nuclear challenge of our generation and that we're going to be a world leader on climate change and then go ahead and expand the fossil fuel industry. Is that credible in your view? No, it's not credible. We can't be expanding fossil fuel extraction. We can't be looking for new fossil fuel reserves, oil, gas or coal, um, when we already have the knowledge that we can't burn the existing fossil fuel reserves. So if we're serious about climate change, we simply can't be taking a case-by-case approach to oil, oil, gas and coal, we need to have a black and white position, which is no new permits. Now, there needs to be a transition. So as the the existing kind of uh, coal mines and oil reserves and gas run out, there needs to be a transition for those workers affected, no question about it. Um, But we simply must have a path to rapidly decarbonise our economy, not looking for more fossil fuel reserves. So what about the argument that there are contractual obligations? I guess they they exist on the ones that have permits now, but you're not even talking about um, canning those, are you? You're not talking about cancelling contracts so so much as not issuing new ones, right? Well, that's right. The first step is to not issue new ones. Obviously, there is a dispute over the existing permits, like why on earth, why should we be letting oil and gas and coal companies look for new reserves? But let's just deal with the question of new permits. Um, The government says it doesn't currently have the legal ability to stop new permits. Well, there's this little room down in Wellington where you're allowed to change the law. Right, and so we need to rapidly change the law. To, if, if this, if the government is right on this, mm. that they don't have that legal power, then they need to rapidly change the law to give themselves that how power. They That's not what have Parliament's the, They for. would have the power to to issue uh, permits, don't they? Issue not not to issue permits. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, well, yeah, well, it's well, the same thing, isn't well, it? Well, I, I would argue that the government does have that power, but if they're claiming they don't, then they mm. should immediately propose yeah, a I mean, law if we change. had a we had a huge angst about whether or not we could ban foreign buyers buying a few houses in Mount Roskill or whatever. Surely we have the wit and wisdom to determine our own future about whether we issue permits to to dig coal out of the ground. That's right. And and if the government doesn't have the legal power to do so, it can rapidly get it by changing the law. Because the thing is, like if, if in the nuclear free 
moment that took leadership. It required David Longy to stand up in Parliament mm. and, and say, well, there will be no more nuclear ships coming to New Zealand. Now, what we need is leadership from this government to stand up and say, no more oil exploration ships coming to New Zealand, no new permits for oil, gas and coal, because we have to decarbonise as quickly as possible. So is this, if we use the analogy, and this is the analogy that's been put forward by the Prime Minister, a current Prime Minister, um, if we use the nuclear analogy, this is like um, saying New Zealand's going to be nuclear free, but then not issuing any policy to make ourselves nuclear free. Well, that's right. It requires leadership from the government. I mean, I, you know, the Prime Minister made it the centre of her election campaign, the, you know, the climate change. She said it was our nuclear free moment. That was fantastic. I fully agree with her. But now we need the actions to follow it up. This is vital. Like, you know, every day we, we're looking in the path now of catastrophic climate change. It is approaching. We can see it. The fire the floods, the hurricanes, the rising sea level, which is putting $50 billion of property in New Zealand at risk. I mean, come on, we need to take action and New Zealand can lead on this, just like we led on nuclear free. If we ban new oil, gas and coal, the world will take notice and goodness knows with the current President of the United States, the world needs some leadership on climate okay, change. and people are going to come back at you, and there's already in the briefings because the Green Party asked for the numbers on this and it was going to cost $15 billion. Now I know that that took in no fracking permits and fracking is, is, is more complex in terms of climate change because it's not uh, we're not really in, in, in the same area there, but you, the argument is going to be the same. They're going to come back at you and, and others who, who propose this and say we can't afford it, it's going to cost us jobs, it's going to cost us GDP revenue, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. What is your response to that? Well, my first response is that really we, we're saying that we, we can't afford to save ourselves from catastrophic climate change. We can't afford to upset the oil industry. And then talking about the detail, if you look at the detail of that analysis, the vast bulk of the cost was lost revenue for oil, gas and coal companies. The truth is that if we're going to make this transition, oil, gas and coal companies have to become history. There's no other way around it. So yes, they have to lose revenue if we're going to save ourselves from catastrophic climate change. This is the only planet we've got. We don't have somewhere else to go. So if some oil companies are going to lose some money as a result of us saving our bacon, then that's the price we need to pay. Oil companies need to be history. This is the only place we have to live. Thank you for your time this morning. Do appreciate you coming into the studio. That is Russell Norman, who is the Executive Director of Greenpeace, and it's 29 to 8. Coming up before 8 on Morning Report, we'll be talking to the Housing Minister about why the government is stopping giving people living in state houses money to move out of Auckland. Also, new walker jumping legislation has been introduced to Parliament. We'll be speaking to Nationals leader Bill English about that and what will happen now to TY Waste. The Mayor of Gore is unimpressed about the solutions on offer. The headlines first now.